Welcome back everyone. The iPad 9th generation just came out. So here's a little tutorial guide, basically a how-to guide of everything that you could probably know of the iPad 9th generation at a bird's high level. It's not going to be every single detail, but for the most part, you'll have a good understanding of how to use your iPad 9th generation. Now starting off with the outside, you can see we have that 10.2 inch panel on the front. It's beautiful. It looks awesome. You have your home button and your fingerprint sensor on the bottom portion of the you know iPad, and your home button will always be at the bottom. Your FaceTime camera, your front-facing ultra-wide sensor that's now brand new, is at the front top right here. They're basically in parallel of each other. Typically, your home button should be at the bottom, but you can always portion however which way you want to. Now at the top of the iPad, you do have your power button, which is right here. You also have your headphone jack right here, which is really awesome. You can plug in headphones. And you have your volume up and down button on the left side. Now this is very important because if you ever need a factor to reset your iPad or anything, you should use these buttons. You have your single camera right here, your charging port at the bottom right here with speakers, a smart connector right here if you ever need to connect your you know, smart case or whatever. And also if you ever get an Apple Pencil, you want to make sure you plug it into the bottom of the charging port right here. So that is a basic walkthrough of the outside. Definitely nothing super crazy. I will save the time of the setup process. It's a very easy process, you know, when you first boot up your iPad. It takes one or two minutes, you know, type in your Apple ID, Wi-Fi, and all that stuff. A lot of personal information. I'll let you guys kind of go through that. And then at some point you will come into your home screen, but not quite your home screen yet. You may come into your lock screen when you go ahead and click your iPad, you know, home button. Now you can turn on your iPad screen by clicking the home button or the power button. These iPads do not support touch to wake or tap to wake, which is annoying, but you can always tap the home button to turn it on. Now on the lock screen, you will see the time and date right here. You'll see the do not disturb option if you ever have it. You could swipe to the side and get into all your widgets right here if you want to. We'll get into that in a second. You can also swipe up to see some, you know, notifications that you may miss. And all your notifications will be pulled up right here. Now you also have the option of going to your camera by swiping to the side. And you can hop into your camera like this. Now I guess we don't really have to do that right now. But that's a really cool thing. Now if you want to come straight into your home screen, you can swipe up. Or you can also go ahead and click that home button. And really the gesture design is the same on all these iPads. So whether you have an iPad 9th generation or the iPad Pros, they all support the you know gesture-based design, but you still have the home button that you can also use as well, which we'll get into all that in a second. But this is your home screen. Now the way it's broken out is on top, you basically have your apps and widgets and all that good stuff. At the bottom, you have this bar. Now this is great for multitasking and all this crazy stuff. If you ever have any most used applications that you want, you can drag them here and you can move and edit all these applications and widgets. You can swipe between all of them by going like this. You guys know how this goes. Now let's say you wanted to move an application, you literally just hold it down like this, you'll get into this pop-up, and you can just kind of wiggle it around like this, and you can go ahead and drag it off to a different page, you can drag it off to this page if you want to, you can also drag multiple applications by holding them down like this, and then clicking on other ones like this, and then you can drag them both. You can also delete widgets or apps by clicking on the minus button, so there's a minus button up here, so you can click on minus here, click remove, and that's really it. Very, very easy process, you know, you can go ahead also on top of that, now if you want to get out of that panel, you just swipe up a little bit and you can go ahead and get out of that specific panel. Now speaking about gestures, this is a very important thing. So you probably already saw that you can swipe up and you can pretty much, you know, if you're in an application like settings, you can swipe up and get out of that specific app. But just like old iPhones, if you're in an application, you can also click the home button here. So the home button is there. I wouldn't really recommend using it too much because, you know, the gesture way is the way it's of the future, but you can still use a home button if you want to. So now if you want to get into your multitasking, so let's say you're in an application and let's say you pull up another application. Let's say we pull up photos. Let's say you want to go back into your settings application. Well, instead of swiping up and then going into applications, this one, what you can do instead is open up that app. You can swipe between your specific applications like this. Now on iPads, it's a little bit different. You want to swipe up and then kind of come into that application from before. So swipe up and go like this. And you can go ahead and try it out a couple different times. It's a very easy process and I like it a lot. Now you can also get into your multitasking panel. Now this is a little bit different. So on this iPad, you can always swipe up in your gesture-based design at kind of an angle. So I'll try it again. Kind of swipe up like this, get into your dock, and then swipe to the side. And you'll see all the applications here. And you can go ahead and swipe out of these applications sometimes to save some RAM here and there. But what you can also do is click, double-click that home button if you want to. 
and you'll get into your multitasking, you can see all the applications that you have in RAM. So now, you know, this is an application I opened up like two days ago, and you can go and open up again and all this good stuff. Now, I like I said, I would recommend using the gesture-based design, so going like this and then clicking on them, but if you wanna use the home button, you have it here too, which is really cool. So that's a basic breakdown of the gestures. Now let's go ahead and make our way over to our settings application. Now this application is a where is area you're probably going to spend a lot of time in if I'm being completely honest. Now the basic stuff like connecting to your network connection and all this stuff, iCloud settings, these are all going to be here. If you ever have any specific setting that you want to change to save you some time, you literally can just click on the search bar up here and type in exactly the thing that you're looking for. So let's say you're having some issues with your brightness. Well, you can go ahead and type in brightness like this and you can start to see all these different things that come up and you'll start to see, hey, like true tone, I want to enable or disable true tone. You can go and click here and you can go ahead and disable or enable true tone right here. So that's a way to save yourself a lot of time if you don't wanna search through each individual setting. But a quick breakdown, here are your notification sounds, connection settings here. And this is an area you're probably not gonna spend too much time in except for the general setting. This is a very important area. Now at the top, you have your about settings. So it breaks down exactly all your iPad, your serial number, all this good stuff. So if you ever want to resell your iPad or buy it or whatever, you can verify everything right here to make sure it matches up with what you're doing. Click back and you can go ahead and click on the software update panel. Now this is important because if you're ever going to update your iPad, which you should do as constantly as possible, you wanna go ahead and update. Now you can see we have an update available. You can go ahead and click on download and install update and the updates will download. Again, a very important area. So you go under general, you click on software update and you just want to kind of make sure that your you know, software is up to date. Now you can also enable automatic updates, these two options right here. If you just want to keep your iPad up to date, if you don't want to worry about you know updating your iPad manually, you have that option there, which is great. And you also have a lot of other options here. Your app store settings, mail, messages, FaceTime. If we swipe all the way to the bottom, you'll see individual application settings. You'll never really have to modify these. Sometimes you may have to go under Snapchat and allow camera stuff, but that usually probably won't happen. So now what we can do is we can click the home button or we can swipe up to get out of that specific panel. Now, like I mentioned before, we have our widgets on our page. So what we can do is we can always add more widgets to the home screen as well. So we can do, like I mentioned earlier, we can swipe to the side and we'll see all of the widgets that are available here. Now with the iPad 9th generation, it comes with iPad OS 15 and it comes with a lot of widgets built in. So let's say we wanted to drag this battery widget to our home screen. Well, you can't really drag it per se like that. That for some reason that's not enabled on iPad OS 15. Instead, what we can do is we can hold down on the home screen like this. You'll see in the top left, a little plus button. We can go and click that plus button right here. You'll see a bunch of different widgets that we can choose from, including a Snapchat widget that I didn't even think, or maybe that's a photo widget, I'm not too sure. But if we look to the side, there's our battery widget right here. We can go and click there and we can see the little add widget option. So we can swipe between these different widgets that we can choose from. So in this case, I'll just use this one. I'll go and click add widget and it'll automatically add that widget to our home screen. So this is a really awesome thing that we have the capability of and I'm really happy about. And again, if you wanna delete a widget, you can click that minus button, click remove, and it'll delete the widget from your home screen. But you also have the ability of hiding applications. So for those of you who don't know, you can delete applications normally. So in this case, let's say we wanna delete the numbers application. We click on that minus, we have a couple different options. We have delete app and remove home screen. So if we click delete app, it's going to delete the application all from our iPad. So we're not gonna be able to find it, we're gonna have to redownload everything. But we also have, if you saw the hide from home screen option, so this remove from home screen option will allow us to actually remove the iPad from our home screen. So we can click that and you'll see the application is removed from our home screen. If we swipe up and we can come back into there, but you'll see that the application is not here, but it's not deleted. Instead, what we can do is we can swipe all the way to the side and get into our app library. Now, this is where all of our hidden apps will you know, be. So we can hide our applications from here, but they will still show up here. So if we want to look for it, all we have to do is swipe all the way over here, swipe down, and we can find that specific page. Now, I don't remember what that application was. Maybe it was pages or something, but you'll be able to see that application right here, open it, but it won't be shown on this home screen, which is great for some you know, privacy related things. Now, I will go ahead and show you a little breakdown of how to download and install applications. So it's very easy. The first thing you wanna do is find the App Store. Now you can see on my page, it's right here. Well, let's say you can't find the application that you're looking for. What you can always do is drag down from the home screen like this, and you'll come into Spotlight Search. 
Now, what this does, it does a great job at actually showcasing and actually finding you your things that you're looking for all across your iPad. So in this case, I can start typing in App Store, and by the time I even typed an app, it already suggests me app right here, the App Store. But if you swipe down, you'll see a ton of different things that you can go through, including settings, photos, all these different things. In this specific case, we already have it, so let's open up App Store, and we'll come into here. Now, in this specific case, the easiest way to download an application is to find the name of that application that you're downloading. So in this case, let's just say we want to download, you know, like some Apple, Let, let's say iMovie, for example. What we would do is on the bottom right, we will see the search bar right here. You'll come into this page. All you want to do is click on the search bar up here and literally type in iMovie. So that's an example of, you know, a specific application that we're using. Click search right here and you'll see the iMovie application. There may be other ones. You can always look through them. But once you find an application, you want to click on it and there's going to be a download button right here. Now, there can also be an update button. If you see an update button or an open button, that means you already have that application installed. In this case, I see an update button. So we can just click on update if we wanted to and it'll start updating this specific application. And that's a really cool thing that we have on this iPad. You know, it's pretty much been there for since the dawn of time. And hopefully you guys will go ahead and update your applications as much as possible. Now, as always, we can swipe up and come back to the home screen. Now, a really cool thing with these iPads is split screen multitasking. So what this allows you to do is it actually allows you to use two applications at once. So in this specific case, let's say we have, you know, our app store open. So we have our app store open on one side. And let's say we want to open up the photos application on the other side. But what we can do is we can swipe up from the bottom very gently. You don't want to go super crazy like I did, but you can swipe up just like this. We can go ahead and find the photos application and drag it to the other side. So drag it up, drag that specific application to the other side. And if the application is suitable, you'll see that it'll actually open on the other side, which is amazing. So now you can also reposition, I don't know why that face keeps coming up, but you can also reposition the specific application like this. So if you want the app store to be smaller, you can do that. If you wanna swipe out of it completely, you can just drag it to the side and the application will be removed, which is really cool. Now you can swipe up once more, get here, and we can go into our multitasking panel. And another cool thing with iPadOS 15 is we can now drag and drop applications on top of each other straight from the multitasking panel. So let's say I wanted to bring photos over App Store. Well, instead of dragging it like that and going to the app itself, I can just hold down on the application like this and I can go ahead and drag it over and even pinpoint exactly where I want to drop the specific application off. So I can drop it off like this, open it up, and it does the exact same thing. Now, if you want to delete the application and you don't want it to keep coming up like that, you just hop out of it like that. And you can even hop out of the application like that and you can go back into it, but you can also delete the application and from RAM at least like this, swipe up and you can go ahead and swipe out and you're pretty much back in the home screen. Now, the last two things I'll go ahead and show you is how to screenshot and screen record on your iPad 9th generation. It's a very easy process. All you want to do is locate the power button on your iPad, which, like I mentioned, is in the top left right by the camera. So you have the home button here, but you have the camera right here. It's going to be on the right side of that camera, depending on how you're looking at. So in this case, for me, it's right up here. And you'll also find your home button on the front as well. In order to screenshot on your iPad 9th generation, you want to go ahead and hold down on the home button and the you know power button at the same time for literally like a second until it registers a screenshot. So in this case, you go and hold them down like this, and you will see that it'll automatically take a screenshot for us. And you'll know it takes a screenshot if it actually opens up the thing at the bottom. Now you can go ahead and open up that specific panel. You'll come straight into here. And all you have to do here is you can either click done if you accidentally open it and you can save it to photos if you'd like, but you can also draw on the application or draw on the image like this. You can modify it. You can do a lot of cool little things here, which is really, really awesome. So whenever you're ready, you can click done, click save to photos and the screenshot will now be saved in your photos application. So you can open up photos like this, click on recent right here and you'll see that little screenshot that we just made. Now you can share this off and do whatever you want to, which is really awesome. Now another thing you can do is screen record. So what we can do is we can make our way over to our settings application like we did before, swipe down. And what we wanna do is we wanna get into the control center of our iPad. So we wanna click on control center right here. And now what we wanna do is we wanna add the screen recording toggle right here. So I already added it, but I'll go ahead and just take it out. So what we wanna do is we wanna swipe down. We'll see the screen recording toggle right here. You wanna go ahead and click on that plus button right next to screen recording. And as long as you see it right there, you should be good to go. So now come back in your home screen or whatever else you wanted to screen record, and you wanna swipe down from the top right. So when you swipe down from the top right, you'll get into your control center. Now, right when you swipe down from the top in general, you'll come back into your lock screen. We already kinda of went over this. 
But what we can do is swipe down from the top right and we'll see our control center. Now a quick breakdown of this, you'll see your Wi-Fi cell signal up here, any music you're playing right here, your screen rotation. So if you want to turn it off from the, or switching to the side, you can do that. Screen mirroring, do not disturb with focus mode built in, which is really cool. Your display setting, so you can increase and decrease the brightness. Your sound setting, so you can increase or decrease the sound, but also our control toggles down here. Now we want to screen record. So this is the screen recording toggle we just added. So we can go ahead and click on that. It's gonna count down from three as you can see. And once it turns like that, and once it, that little red thing comes at the top right, you will pretty much be able to start screen recording. So we can go ahead and screen record whatever we were going to do, it doesn't really matter. Whenever you're done wanting to screen record, you can click on the top right again. So click there, click stop, and that recording will now be saved into your Photos application. So now what we can do is go and click on our Photos app like this. We can swipe to the side, and you will see that screen recording that we just did right there. So just like any other photo or application or image or whatever, we can click here and we can go and click on that share button right here. And we can share this out to whoever you want to message it to people, whatever the case is, a very easy process. And just like every other application, we swipe up and we can come back home. So that's pretty much a quick breakdown, a quick process of this specific, you know, iPad 9th generation. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you know a little bit more about this iPad. If you guys have any other questions or anything like that, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that means so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.